Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. So everybody's at this, this page, right? This website, so bookmark this for sure. Make sure you bookmark this. This will help, this is an amazing website that almost nobody in cancer bioinformatics is really taking advantage of. They have so much data and it's very easy to get. So here's what we're gonna do is on the right here, it says use R2 without an account. So let's click on that. What's nice is if you do, you can go back and register to this and that will basically allow you to save gene lists. And you can do a lot of different things if you actually register with it. Okay, everybody's on this page. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, again, we were talking about, I wanna look at triple negative breast cancer. I wanna kind of investigate that a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, so I'm gonna look at a single data set and here's what I'm going to do is select a data set for analysis. I'm going to click on that arrow and you should get to this window here. Is everybody at this? Okay. Well, I want to, know, you know, basically they have a ton of data in here. They have 1,820 different studies with lots and lots of different samples. So what I want to do is I just want to look, find their breast cancer database. So I'm, what I'm going to do in my window here, I'm going to type breast and just hit return. You don't have to select anything. You should end up with 82 now. Has everybody got that? Cool. All right. So now what I want to do so we have all these breast cancer studies. If we look, this is basically telling you how they were measured. Uh, U133P2 is like those gene chips that I just passed out. Those were done on those. Um, this is normalization. And here on N is basically telling you how many samples are in there. In my opinion, usually the more samples, the better. So what I wanna do is I wanna find as many samples, breast cancer samples as possible. So what I'm going to do on this end is I'm going to click it and then we get the lowest one, click it again. And now our top one is 3,207 samples. If I was going to construct this, if I was going to do this study and I need to grant, this is like millions of dollars easily, easily. And we get it for free, free 99. Okay. So here's what I want to do is, this is the one I want to use. I'm going to hit select here on the left. And then I'll pop you back to the original window. So you should see tumor breast primary 3,207. This TPM is how it was normalized. Uh, that's transcripts per million. So what that is telling me right now is that this is sequence data. This is RNA-seq data. Does everybody know what RNA-seq data is? You can have two types of expression data for the most part, in general. Usually those gene chips there are hybridization. So what we're actually doing on those gene chips is you're basically spotting a particular sequence of DNA and then you actually add, and it's basically, you know it's going to, it's usually 25 MERS, and you know it's going to hybridize with a particular, a specific message. And then basically you take your mRNA, you put it on there, you basically, you know, let it hybridize. And then you wash out anything that isn't uh, bound. And then base, and you attach fluorescence to the, to the DNA or to the mRNA that you're adding onto it. And then you basically scan it with a laser. So, that's hybridization. And in th that instance, you never have a zero. There's always a basal level of high or fluorescence on those arrays. That's huge. When you start getting into statistics and stuff, zeros suck. <laughs> like like they are, they're not easy to deal with. It becomes, it's a difference between kind of normal distribution and, you know, non-parametric distribution, right? So it's a very different way. I would say I get better statistics using the arrays than I do actually the 
RNA-seq data, the sequence data. So in the sequence data, what you're doing is you're basically counting the amount of sequences associated with a particular message. So, you're at, and so what you can do is, if you don't get any sequence associated with a message, you get a zero. So that's a whole different thing as well. Just telling you the difference. So, and what I would say is hybridization tends to be a lot easier to analyze. The sequence data tends to be a lot more sensitive. So in my mind, if I'm just trying to get a general idea of the system, I'm probably gonna do hybridization. If I want, if my conditions are very similar to each other and I'm looking for something very specific, then I want the RNA seq data. Everybody understand that? Okay. All right. So we're here now. Let's go type of analyses. So you can do all this with this stuff, right? So I'm going to go down here. Remember, we were talking about different comparisons we can do. So the first one, let's just do a A versus B comparison. Okay. That's an easy one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to different differential expression between two groups. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to go next. Okay. So we're here. We're going to select our test. Remember, we can do any kind of test we want. I'm just going to keep a T test. Oh, no, not that right. T test, you would use most statistical tests you're going to use in this thing are going to tell you a difference. It's just a little bit, you know, maybe one might give you less false positive than the other, but more or less, I mean, they're, they're giving you kind of similar answers. So in this instance, I'm just going to use a T test. Here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to group by. So I need to pick my two or my category that I'm going to use. I'm going to go to clinical groups. So click on that. Okay. And now I'm just going to say submit. Now we need to figure out what we're going to compare. So in this top one, I want triple negative breast cancer, which stands, it's T and B, C. It's on the bottom. There's 320 in there. So I'm going to click on that. Okay. Now what I'm going to compare it to is the one that has all positives. So ER positive, so you see the ERP, HER2 positive, should be 287 samples. I'm gonna click on that. <coughs> we can go down here. This is just basically to transform it. You can turn this into log two data. And that's what a lot of people do to min minimize uh, variation in your, your statistics. Uh, for this instance, I don't think we have to. I mean, we can basically keep it locked too. That's fine. <clears throat> Correlate. And again, remember, we talked about multiple testing. We're doing a lot of tests in this particular thing, so we're going to generate error. So what they do is they give you an, uh, the possibility to use false discovery rate to kind of control for, for the error that you're going to generate. Okay, so we got false discovery rate. Uh, we can just leave the p-value cut off. So basically, whatever gene list I, I generate, I would expect 1% of that to be false positives. So if I get 1,000 genes different, how many false positives do I have? 10, yes, correct. <laughs> It gets interesting sometimes, and this is how you kind of know if you've if your experiment worked or not, is if say I'm looking at 10,000 genes and I say I use a p-value of 0 0.01, and I end up with 94 genes. Do you think my experiment worked? So if I got 10,000, I'm looking at using a p-value of 0 0.01. How many false positives should I have? 100. 
in my gene list, I get 96 genes. Oops. <laughs> Basically, what happens is if your false positive number is higher than the genes that you got, something went wrong. <laughs> and I use that as a way to kind of figure out if, is there anything truly different in my system? What you can also do is take a distribution, do a, a bar graph of, of your, of your p-values. If it's completely random, you should have an equal distribution of your p-values. So you should have like a straight horizontal line across all your p-values from zero to one. If there is a change, you'll have what, what do they call it? It's some kind of curve. I can't remember what it's called. Basically what you'll do is you'll get a curve and it'll start from the zero and it'll go down like this. And it's a specific curve in uh, statistics if I, didn't have so much brain damage from playing rugby, I'd probably remember that. But you basically, you're gonna get higher, a lot more lower p-values and then they just kind of goes down. Beta, I think it's called the beta curve, beta curve, curve, I don't know, whatever. But anyway, so that's what you're kind of looking for. If my error rate is higher than the, actually my significant genes, something went truly, really wrong, okay? So I'm just going to leave that, and then I'm going to hit, we can do present calls. I'm, I'm just going to leave all the defaults here. You can look and see, you know, any of these things you want to use. I'll let you do that. And let's hit submit. All right, this might take a while. Hopefully not too much. Oh, crap, that was quick. Internet's way quicker than I was using. Okay. So here are our genes. This is what's different. These are the genes that are different between our triple negative and our almost triple positive. And you're thinking, okay, what the heck does this mean, Mike? <laughs> and we could look. Actually, here's a uh, GATA3 is definitely showing up here. Uh, we also have estrogen receptor one, so definitely very much indicative of um, breast cancer. Well, let's take a look and see what, what kind of pathways, what gangs are in this gene list. So again, we can do criminal history. I basically did a kind of quick one, ESR1, definitely a criminal associated with breast cancer. We can do, we can basically look up um, all these genes individually and find out, do they have a criminal history? We can actually look and see the expression. So if you click on that, um, what was it, uh, I thing, whatever, it'll basically shoot you to this graph. And you can see here is AGR3, you can see here is the triple positive, and here's what it's doing in the triple negative. So it, this particular gene, it's much higher than the other form of cancer. Okay, go back to our original one. So let's find out what gangs are in here. So here's what I'm gonna do is on the right, or actually if you look down here, on the lower left, it's kind of giving you mini ontology analysis. So these are all the things, remember we talked about how do we find if, if something's over representative of a data set, right? What basically, these are all the care, or categories, biological characters, categories that we're getting overrepresented genes, that we're getting way more genes than we'd expect by random chance. Does everybody understand that? And if you look at it, it does make sense. DNA repair, apoptosis, cell cycle, drug targets, kinases, signaling transduction. These are all cancer type stuff, right? These, these are all the gangs that are associated in, in our list. So let's get a little more specific and go to gene set analysis. So click here on the right. Okay. So with my gene set collection, I'm just gonna do kegs, keg pathways. You can do any one of these. You can look to see what they are, but I would say probably keg pathways is the most common uh, database to use. Again, we can use our P cutoff. What I want to do is I want to see representation of overrepresented biological units. And then basically now here, what I can say is on my clinical 
groups, do I just want to look at all or do I want to basically look at, say, just genes that are overexpressed in the triple negative? So let's do that. Let's just look at genes overexpressed in triple negative. So I'm going to click on the clinical groups for that one. So it's one on the bottom, and then I'm going to hit next. And here we go. These are the gangs associated with triple negative breast cancer. And if you look here, they kind of make sense. Although you see, why do you think type one diabetes would show up? What's up? I would say there, there are, but what do you think, instead of growth factors, what do you think is really like, is it growth factors? So if you look here, type one diabetes, here are the genes associated in that group that we found in our gene list, different between triple negative and triple positive. What do you notice about some of these genes in here? I don't know, maybe I'm... <laughs> So what do you think that means? Yes. Great. Extra credit. You can have a gene chip, by the way. <laughs> don't eat it. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I don't want to get sued. Um, yes. It's immune system. Graft versus hostian disease. This is what I do in bioinformatics is you kind of look at these categories and it basically kind of flavors. It's, it's basically telling you what you're looking at. As I look here, one of my top groups is this graft versus host. And if I look over here, HLA, these are, you know, these are all immune type stuff. There's immune component to the differences between triple negative and triple positive. And it seems to be that at least in the triple negative, there's a lot of immune involvement. Because remember, we only took those genes that were higher in the triple negative. So these are what's overrepresented in, in those groups. A lot of these, like I said, is just, you know, you got DNA replication, antigen processing, presentation. Tuberculosis is another viral. You're inducing a lot of uh, 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 inflammation, you know, all of these things. And here, if you go down, that TNF, if you actually look in the literature, what you'll find is TNF is absolutely and utterly associated with the triple negative phenotype for sure. So lots of immune stuff. And is there any apoptosis? Sometimes I, when I was going down here, I was seeing some. I think if you go down farther, you also see some apoptosis. One thing also to remember is we compared a cancer to another cancer. So we are seeing if you go down farther, you'll see like apoptosis genes are overrepresented in the triple negative. Does that mean there's more apoptosis in the triple negative? Potentially. That is basically what that is telling me is, again, if I probably compared it to a control individual, the apoptotic genes in the triple negative are going to be much lower. But if I'm comparing to another cancer and the triple uh, the apoptotic genes are higher, that just means that they're lower in the other group. So what I would say is that in the triple positive group probably is downregulating its apoptotic genes more than the triple negative. All of these different cancers, they have different ways of beating the cops, right? Some of them punch them in the face. Some of them, you know, cut off their arms. Some of them steal their gun. Like they all have like different mechanisms how to do this. And with this triple negative, it seems to, it seems to me that there's a huge immune component to it, which probably makes it a lot more, that's probably why it's a lot more dangerous than the other cancers and a lot worse for you. Okay.